I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of tutorials on the internet to adjust your VTX power in iNav based on your distance from home. Well, we've gone one better than that. So come and check out this video. Hi guys, I'm Darren and welcome to the video. So in the introduction, I sort of hinted that we're going to be taking the VTX control based on distance and making it a little bit smarter. So we'll get into that very shortly. But in the meantime, I'd just like to ask if you find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. This will help other people find the video and help them out too. So what's different? Well, currently you have your plane and what will happen is the further away from home you get, the more the power on your VTX increases which is all very well and good if you do that. But what if you do that or even that? You, you could do that, loiter above your head at the right distance away and the power won't increase because it's all based on home distance. We're gonna change that. So what we're actually gonna do is from say, that's your home point. So no matter where you are, it will always be a straight line between the home point and the plane is the distance that counts, not just the distance away from home. So let's get into iNav and I'll show you how to do it. So before we get started, I thought I'd try and do a little demonstration, though bear with me because this is not going to be the easiest thing to do because it's based on the height of this. So I'll give it a go. So what you'll notice is when we switch on the flight controller, we're on power level one. But what I'm going to do, and hopefully this will work, is I'm going to raise up and you can see it switched to power level two. So you can see that it's actually working based on the altitude. It's currently set very low to five centimeters. So if I get up really high, maybe it'll get on to level three. No, but you can see that part's working. So what I'll do is I'll switch this off and I'll get in iNav and I'll show you what, what needs to be done. So let's get into iNav and have a look at what we need to do. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the ports tab and on the ports page, what you want to make sure you have is your smart audio or tramp telemetry set up so that you can actually change the power on your VTX in the first place. So make sure you've got that done first. And then what we're going to do is head over to the programming page. So the first thing that we're going to do is create what I'm calling our 3D distance from home. And what that is, as I explained earlier, is the distance between your home point and the model, just drawing a straight line in 3D space. So it's not just along the ground. But there's a problem with this. So if I just open up our flight parameters and I'll set one to our home distance and one to the altitude, you may see a slight issue here. The altitude is in centimeters. The distance from home is in meters. So what we're going to do is convert the altitude into meters. Just easier to work in meters. So let's take the easy option. So what we're going to do is divide and we'll get our altitude and we're going to divide it by 100. So the centimeters are now meters. So the output of logic condition what, zero is our altitude in meters. Now what we can do is add them together. So this is add, not and. So just add. And we're going to go for our flight parameter of our home distance. And now we want our logic condition zero. So our output from here is going into here and adding to our home distance. So this in effect is our 3D distance from home. But unfortunately we can't use it as is. So what we need to do is set it in a global variable so so we change this one here and we're going to set it to the output of logic condition one so whatever is output by this logic condition is now going to be set in this global variable so if i enable these and we set this actually to one instead of 100 what you'll see is the output from our barometer in centimeters as you can see it's not exactly accurate i'm in a bit of a breezy room at the moment so we're getting a bit of fluctuation but if i put that back to 100 so you can see our, our global variables adjusting so 
we'll put it back to 100 because that's the setting we need so you can see where it's where it's in bio, bio meters now it's it's nice and stable so the next thing that we need to do is uh, create our distances where our uh, vtx power will change so what we're going to do is create three greater than rules don't forget to enable them i'm going to enable down to eight just so i don't forget because we're using eight in total so what we're going to do is we're going to set it to use our global variable which is global variable zero which is our 3d position from home and now we're just going to set in what we want our distances to be so just for this example i'm going to set it to 100 meters 500 meters and a kilometer but obviously you can set this based on your new noise floor your uh, equipment all that sort of stuff this is just for our example so what we have now are some conditions that we can actually use for example if we're greater than a kilometer we can use that to change our vtx to the full power but for the rest of them we meet, need to make them more specific so that only one thing is active at a time so the first thing that we're going to do is use a not so what we're going to say is if we're not greater than 100 meters then we're closer none of these will be active because of you know if 100 not active the others won't be so we are closer than 100 meters so this will be our lowest power level so we have our lowest power level and we have our highest power level but we need to make sure that we have exclusivity on these two middle power levels so we're going to use a couple of xors for this so the first one what we're going to do is we want to make sure that 100 we're greater than 100 but we're not greater than 500 so we can say number four which is sorry number three is greater than 100 and number four is greater than 500 so the way the exclusive all works is one of these has to be true but not both and not neither of them so sorry that should be four so if we're greater than 100 that will be active but if we're greater than 500 this one will also be active so this will not be so if this rule here is active we know we're between 100 meters and 500 meters because this one is very similar we're just going to use number four and number five so let's go over these rules now so logic condition number six we're not greater than 100 meters this is our closest position so we can have, be on our lowest power number seven we are greater than 100 meters but we're less than 500 meters so this is our power level two number eight we are greater than 500 meters but we're less than a thousand meters so this is power level three and number five we're greater than a thousand meters so that's full power our power level four so that's what we need to now set up so if we save this and we can head into global functions we'll just enable four on here and now we need to set them up for the logic conditions so if you remember the first one is logic condition six which is our not greater than 100 meters so this is our lowest power so set vtx power level to number one then we're going seven and eight so power level two power level three and for our highest power level if you remember it's logic condition five and that we want to power level four so now we save that everything is done well our power levels will ramp up and down depending on our 3d distance from home right so now let's take a look at some real world footage of this working now this nano talon belongs to rich adams and he's the guy who basically came to me with some logic conditions to try and do this which weren't working so i put my brain in gear and i came up with this solution so first let's freeze and take a quick look at rich's osd so we can see what's going on so in the top left hand you have the distance from home which note is in feet I'll do a conversion into meters just to make life easier. Then if you look pretty much center on the right hand side, you have the altitude again, also in feet. And then on the bottom on the right hand side, you have 
USB VTX indicator, which has the channel and most importantly for this, the power, which is the last number. So right, let's carry on. Let's launch the model and see what happens. So I've paused the screen at this point and what you can see is on screen, we have 147 feet away from home and 38 feet up. So 147 feet is about 44 meters. 38 feet is about 11 meters. So we've just crossed over the 50 meter mark. It's actually 55 meters. So what you'll see is when we resume play, it's going to switch straight up into um, power level two on the VTX. So you, you can see here that we're actually further away, but we're also taking into consideration the altitude. But this will be a lot clearer further away from home. So here we are further into the flight. We're now in 3D cruise mode, so we have a nice consistent altitude and a consistent pace. Now what you're gonna see in a second is our VTX power switch from power level three to power level four. Now, our, as, you, as you've seen in the tutorial, this distance is set at one kilometer, 1,000 meters. But what you'll notice is it actually switches over at 0 0.055 miles, which is 885 meters from home point but we're at an altitude of 380 feet, which is 115 meters above ground. Add 885 to 115 and you have a thousand. So this is a perfect example of a power switching over. It's just gone there. So you can see that this is working, taking both altitude and distance into account. I'll show one more example of it coming back and then I think we can call it a day. So this is it. We're on our way home and now all we're going to show is that the power will come back when we go down to the next threshold so just now we've gone under the 500 meter threshold which means we've dropped down to power level two and we're on our way home so just before we go i want to thank rich adams for actually asking how to do this so it may it made me get my brain in gear and actually work out how we can do this in a 3d way just before we wrap up, there's one thing I need to point out, and it's quite important. As it currently stands, there is a slight problem with this setup. It won't affect most people doing it, but may affect some. So I think it's only fair that I point it out and make people aware of it. So this altitude here is all well and good as long as you're flying above yourself. If you're flying below, it will actually decrease the distance from home. So that could force the power levels on the VTX to drop. So just be aware of that. So if, for example, you're flying a kilometer away, but you're flying 100 meters below yourself, the 3D home distance would only be 900 meters, which on our example would drop it down to power level three. So just be aware of that. It, as I say, it won't affect many people because most people fly above themselves rather than below but just to be aware of that. But also I'd like to say that I have put in a request to the iNav GitHub to um, actually create a 3D distance from home variable. So if they produce that, we can replace this, or well, we can just get rid of this whole section here and just use greater than on a flight parameter of 3D distance from home. So what I've actually asked for is for the altitude to be an absolute altitude. That means whether it's in positive or negative, it will still be added to the home distance. So if you are flying a kilometer away, but a hundred meters down with an absolute altitude, it would still register the 3D distance from home as 1,100 meters. So hopefully that will be implemented soon. And then I'll do a quick update video, but you basically won't need, need the first three um, logic conditions. You'll just start here with a flight parameter and that will be 3D home distance. But unfortunately, until then, this is the only way we can do it. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. It will help get these videos out so that more people get to see them and get to have enhanced flights, or have problems solved and just make the whole experience better. So thank you very much, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.